Assassin's Creed 2 is a game where you bare knuckle box with the Pope and collect pigeon feathers for a pudgy Italian kid. As promised. Grazie, brother. I was expecting AC2 to have a lot of this. But I wasn't expecting it to have this. I can't take no loss. Huh? I don't even know what it costs. Huh? I hit the ground and it go off. Yeah. Hit the ground and it go off. Yeah. Damn, I didn't know Ezio was strapped. I just finished my first ever playthrough of Assassin's Creed 2, and in this video, I'm going to do a deep dive review of the game and tell you whether it's still worth playing today. So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and let's step into the world of the great assassin, Ezio Auditore. Great to handle things yourself. Your sister seemed quite satisfied with the handling I gave her earlier. <laughs> In my AC1 review, I talked about how, while I found the lore and story intriguing, I was ultimately turned off by the jankiness of the combat and parkour. Thankfully, AC2 greatly improved and smoothed out a lot of these gameplay systems, making for a much more enjoyable experience. Exploration is much improved with faster and smoother parkour, facilitated by better world design in the Italian cities. Ezio is also able to move faster through the city streets without being attacked by guards at every corner. You'll also unlock some more advanced climbing techniques to allow Ezio to climb higher than his predecessor Altair. Social stealth options have also been expanded with the addition of crowd blending, hiring courtesans to conceal yourself or distract guards, as well as hiring mercenaries and thieves to attack or lure guards away as well. Ezio can also throw coins or smoke bombs to create confusion. Combat options have also been expanded, not only with new weapons like the gun, but moves as well. Ezio can taunt enemies, throw dirt in their eyes, perform double assassinations with the dual hidden blades, and steal opponents' weapons before using it against them. The gun was probably the most unexpected and most fun addition to Assassin's Creed. We receive a prototype handgun from Leonardo da Vinci about halfway through the game. It's an incredibly effective and fun tool to pull off some assassinations, since we can line up and one-shot pretty much any enemy in the game. For some missions, the gun also seems to be the only viable option, since getting up close without being detected isn't always possible. After playing the first two games, I now understand why some AC fans recommend starting with Assassin's Creed 2. The gameplay is much improved compared to its rough around the edges predecessor, making for a better entry into the franchise for a first time player. Ultimately though, while the combat options have been expanded, the most efficient option is still to use counter kill with the hidden blade, so most encounters will involve waiting for the enemy to attack before countering and instantly killing them with the hidden blade. It's just the path of least resistance in 99% of combat. The sequels Brotherhood and Revelations would go on to refine these gameplay systems even further, almost to perfection, but the core systems in AC2 still hold up incredibly well over a decade later. AC2 also introduced the Villa Management System, which allows Ezio to renovate and upgrade various businesses to generate passive income. This is how you'll earn most of the money you need to purchase new weapons and armor, so it's important to return to the villa often to collect revenue and continue upgrading the property. At this point, the villa dialogue is seared into my memory forever. Salute, Claudia. You here to look at the book? Salute, Claudia. You here to look at the book? It was cool to see the villa go from a rundown estate full of boarded up businesses to a bustling town with a thriving economy and people milling through the streets. Most of the other side activities in AC2 are fairly mid though. You have package deliveries, beating up randos, races, decoding animus puzzles, and collecting a hundred freaking feathers all across the map. Sorry, Ma, I ain't getting all those. The only standout side content were the Assassin Tombs, a series of intricate parkour environmental puzzles. Completing all of these rewards you with the absolutely badass Armor of Altair, which upgrades your HP bar to take up half of the freaking screen. I love it when games give you a long-term goal to obtain a really badass piece of gear with the best stats. 
it was satisfying to finally be able to don the armor of another legendary assassin. So let's talk about the main story of Assassin's Creed 2. We will be delving into spoiler territory in this section, so go to this timestamp now if you want to avoid spoilers. I really enjoyed the story of AC2. It's a sprawling epic adventure spanning two plus decades of unraveling conspiracies with some of the most well-known figures in Renaissance Italy. One of the things I really enjoy about the Assassin's Creed series, at least when it's at its best, is the feeling of uncovering a massive Illuminati-style plot and closing in on its conspirators through a series of assassination missions, slowly unraveling the layers of truth along the way. AC2 captures this vibe perfectly, as Ezio tracks and kills members of powerful Templar families throughout Italy, uncovering their ultimate plans to utilize Isu artifacts to gain control over the people. For the uninitiated, Assassin's Creed blends a modern-day story with a simulation based in a more historical setting. In modern times, the protagonist, Desmond Miles, enters a device called the Animus, where he can relive the memories of his ancestors, in this case the Italian assassin, Ezio. AC2 starts off fairly innocuous, with a young Ezio Auditori running errands for his family members. But soon, his father and brothers, including young little Petruccio, are tried and hanged for treason, leaving Ezio to carry on his father's mysterious work alongside his uncle Mario. That scene where Ezio fails to save his family was one of the most impactful moments of the AC franchise for me. I'll kill you for what you've done! Guards! Arrest him! Abba Tetel. Better run, boy. Fast. Assassin's Creed 2 has some of the best missions in the entire series, with some cool moments that I'll never forget. From winning competitions at the Carnival and infiltrating a Templar party, to foiling an attempt to wipe out the Medici family, and stringing its lead conspirator out in the public. Francesco. And of course, using Leonardo da Vinci's flying machine to infiltrate a palace and assassinate a Templar target. Ma cos'è? Shoot! Shoot the flying demon! Most of the game is absolutely incredible. Unfortunately, AC2 starts to stumble a bit towards the end of the game, particularly in sequences 12 and 13. I later learned that these were DLC missions that have now been incorporated directly into the main plot of AC2 Remastered. Sequence 12 sees us linking up with Caterina Sforza and Machiavelli as they attempt to retake the town of Forli and protect the Apple of Eden from falling into Templar hands. This sequence has a lot of open combat and just feels like a slog to get through. Sequence 13 is the worst content in the entire game, as Ezio needs to assassinate nine different random targets in some of the most restrictive mission design I've ever seen. This sequence foreshadows some of the most frustrating missions we'll experience in AC Brotherhood. With most of these missions, you will instantly fail if you get spotted by a guard for a single moment, even if you kill the guard before they can alert others. From a story standpoint, these two sequences are a big nothing burger, as you are in the exact same situation when they are finished, as you were at the end of sequence 11. The final sequence sees Ezio confront the big bad Templar, Rodrigo Borgia, who's now become the Pope. The first part of the mission where we infiltrate the Vatican is really fun, but the final boss fights with the Pope are hilariously bad. We essentially button mash him down with a group of goons, and then finish him off in a literal fist fight, headbutting him into submission before sparing his life. The game ends with Ezio accessing a vault and interacting with a hologram member of the first civilization who passes a warning directly to Desmond Miles through Ezio, leaving us on a cliffhanger to be continued in Brotherhood. Assassin's Creed 2 was an absolute joy to play, and I wish I had experienced it sooner. I guess it's better late than never, though. At the time of writing this review, I've finished playthroughs of all the early AC games, including the Ezio Trilogy and AC3. And I gotta say, AC2 is probably my favorite, hands down. If you haven't played Assassin's Creed 2, or even if you have, I highly recommend picking up this game today. So there you have it. 
my review of Assassin's Creed 2 as a first-time player. I definitely look forward to replaying this game sometime in the future. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more action game and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.